Welcome to the show, everybody. This is episode number 275 of the Iron Coop Fights Movies. This episode is available on iTunes, YouTube, Google Cloud, Google Play, and hosted by SoundCloud. Please check out my graphic novel, The Gold Line and the Tournament of the Sentinels. The ebook is only $2.99. Link in the description. I'm Kier, your host. With me on the show today are my co-hosts, Emerson. Hey, what's going on? And Everett. Hey, what's up? This week, the team reviews The Prestige. Um... Period thriller set in Edwardian London, where two rival magicians, partners until the tragic death of an assistant during a show, viewed bitterly after one of them performs the ultimate magic trick, teleportation. His rival tries to desperate his rival tries desperately to uncover the secret of his routine, experimenting with dangerous new science as his quests as his quest takes him to the brink of insanity and jeopardizes the lives of everyone around the pair. I'm going to read our um, rating system. On the show, we give the titles that we have watched a rating of win, draw, or loss. A win is a title that we would highly recommend, while a draw is a title we didn't love but recognize others may appreciate. A loss means we do not recommend the title. All right, Emerson, do you want to go first? Sure. So having never seen The Prestige before and knowing nothing about it with the exception of there are magicians. I didn't know having, that. Yeah, there are magicians having some type of competition. Uh, I give this a win. I thought it was really good. I thought it was well acted. I thought it was well written. Uh, the twists was really interesting. Twists, I guess, uh, I should say, were really interesting. I thought that, um, you know, doing this type of movie in general where you don't have a firm time frame, at least initially, you know, because time it's jumping around in terms of, you know, not only character points of view, but the times, the the, you know, time period which these characters are experiencing things that can be really jarring, especially in a movie that is trying to, you know, reveal the prestige at the end. Um, so I think this movie handles it pretty well. And there's a large amount of, you know, foreshadowing and things where you can look back at the start and say, okay, I see how this is foreshadowing something. I see how this gets used later. I see how there's hints of the twist coming. It doesn't feel just like a deus ex machina where, oh yeah, something just changed at the end. So it's a win for me. I think this is really good. I definitely see why people uh, consider it to be an excellent movie uh, in the Nolan catalog. I'm going to give it a win as well. I had seen this movie a long time ago, so I'd say at least over eight. It's been over eight years since I've seen it in full. But I really enjoy it. The same thing Emerson basically just said. I think it's got great acting and great story. It's got a great atmosphere. It's got fantastic visuals. And I think it's a pretty unique story because, I mean, I don't really know how many other movies have to do with, like, magicians like this. (laughs) Actually, there's uh, one that's, like, a direct rival to this film. uh, What is it? The Illusionist. I've never seen it. So, uh, so from my perspective, it's pretty unique. But uh, I really enjoy it. And especially, I went into this movie knowing the ending and knowing the twist. But uh, I don't think that really affected my experience rewatching it because... Now that I can, you know, now that I know it, watching it all the way through, you can sign, you can kind of pick up on a little bit of subtlety that they give you like all the way through, especially when they reveal it at the end. I think it's really well made um, and I'm excited to talk about it. So, yeah, it's a win for me. All right. Yeah, I'll, I'll give it a win so we can go into spoilers. Um, I think what you see a lot is Nolan's he's building up his talent at telling nonlinear stories. But they are linear but he does it in the right way. So yeah. if you think about Inception, when at the beginning of the movie, Cobb washes up on the shore and Sato's really old, and you're like, what is that? Okay, that's obviously not linear, but it, the way he sets it up to tell the story in a, in a way that you can like put it together chronologically by the end mm-hmm. works really well. Because when you say nonlinear story, you're thinking about a story that like moves all over the place across generations and space and whatever shit like that. And usually people get lost. Like Cloud Atlas is a perfect Yeah, that's example. exactly like, what I was thinking. <laughs> the fuck is this? I don't even know what's happening. Um, you see him You see him do his nonlinear thing. You see him do his uh, big twist thing. You see him do his ending twist thing. Um, I thought that, see, I like to me, this ending twist doesn't rise to um, Inception. And part of it is because like, what did you guys think, especially Emerson? What did you think was happening to Angier? So I, I thought initially, 
it's weird because I didn't really I understood that it wasn't teleportation. Okay. You because you're talking about what did what did I think was happening when he does the trick? Yeah. I understood that it wasn't teleportation. So I was aware that it was copying because we see the hats earlier. Right. So I knew it was copying, but it didn't really gather to me. I just assumed he was always killing the clone, maybe. I didn't realize that there was no guarantee which one lived, you know, because and by the end, that's that, not. Yeah, that yeah. part doesn't really make sense. Well, I, I think there's a little bit more subtlety to it because I, I'm not necessarily sure the whole it's because he's cloning himself is the real twist for him at the end. Because they very obviously not. show you that, yeah, they very obviously show you that he's cloning himself the entire time. Because you're right, they show the hats, they show the cats, but they never show you uh, two of him at once the entire time until the very end. Not, not even the very end, like like you, the very the last scene of the you movie. The bodies. You see the bodies. Yeah. You see the bodies. The very last thing. So the I twist always thought is that he's that, been killing himself. Yeah, but I don't think that's the twist. I always thought the more subtle twist with him was: is he still alive out there? Mm, like, I didn't get that. I thought they didn't I thought really try was, to say that. I thought that was the last copy. The thing is, I don't. There can I, only I be one extra copy, right? But well, how I do you know? Because well, I think he's killing the them every night. Hinted at it. Otherwise, like I feel like we would have seen like someone. Right? I know that's cheesy, but to me, that ending, the way he's acting. Um, suggests he's the last one, but I I didn't really. But you, you also have to think before we move on from that. You also have to think what would be the point of the movie doing that. It like, wouldn't make sense because Angier is he's consumed by this. Yeah, if if he's still out there, the feud doesn't end. It doesn't mm -hmm. end. That's true. Because yeah, um, but it also is like so. What is he doing? Like. What kind of ending is that? What is like? Wh where did he go? He goes like, to Germany, and he like like you can say like theoretically it's possible that he made other clones and sent them out to like breed and have like kids that are all him. And I don't know. I guess you could have thrown that in there at the end, but it would make no sense for the story. It would just be weird. Yeah, but that's why uh, I, yeah, I, 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 I guess in my head, like I, mean, I, I guess it's sort of like uh, you know, like the process of it all, like because you you see him experimenting with it, and he goes, he explains. I forget the names but he explains to christian bale like his process of learning how to use the or machine where he's christian yeah he, he pops up in front of him and he shoots himself with a revolver you know there's that process of learning how to use it and one would assume that would take a great degree of trial and error to get that to work right correctly. but i took it as when he says he says i was never sure if i was the one who's gonna die or not and mm -hmm. that doesn't make sense that to i don't understand because, because you see him drop you see him drop, and also because he should be able to set up the trick so that one of them dies every time. It should either be him dying every time, aka the original dies every single time. That's the only way it makes sense. Well, wait, are you saying it doesn't make sense on the fact that he doesn't know which one is going to die? The one that steps into the cage is basically like 100% doomed to die. Yeah. Because well, they drop him in. Well, it's the same thing, Emerson. It's the same thing they do in Invincible. Because remember, they also do that in Invincible. Where he's like, "That's why," because uh, it, it splits the consciousness in half, and you don't know which one's going to be the clone and which one's going to be the original. Do you Wait, remember that? What about the guy that's in oh. the cage that gets? I know, I know. But my point is that physically, one of them is physically dying by a trap door, right, Everett? Mm -hmm. Which means that one of them is standing over a trap door. And it's right. the guy that's initiating. Which means the one of them always is going to die and knows that, which is the guy but, initiating. Yeah, but that's that's physically. I'm talking about mentally. Because physically, he's creating a clone of himself, like a copy okay, of himself. Okay, I kind of get what you're saying, where you're saying, like... No, it doesn't make sense. No, no, no. I know what he's trying <laughs> to say is that when you make, create the clone, the clone comes into existence with the exact same memory of everything up to coming into existence as the original so whatever it's basically saying is the clone comes into existence being like holy shit am i the one who's about to drop but it doesn't make sense because the original knows that he's gonna die he's killing himself yeah, the original each time to do the trick he's killing himself per purposely which means it's guaranteed that every single clone is the one who gets to live for that night and then every single clone kills themselves the next time they do the trick 
except mm. the last guy who basically stops. Who didn't like appear as the teleported version and escape. But he, here's what I don't understand is like, so Emerson, you haven't seen this before because I knew that was coming and I forgot that it was a secret. So I'm watching it and I'm like, they don't actually explain that he's killing himself every night. And then it became the twist ending, which I didn't remember. What did you think was happening? As I said, I wasn't sure because I knew he was making copies, but the yeah. copies obviously weren't running around. And so yeah. I was assuming either he was – he had a legion of copies, which didn't entirely make sense. Obviously, by by the point in the story where we're introduced to the machine, I realized, okay, so Borden saw a clone of Angier probably die. when he, And so I, I realized that there was probably another Angier out there because – yeah, obviously. Yeah. Um, but I wasn't entirely sure if the ending was going to be multiple Angiers or if there was going to be some other conspiracy. I, I, because as as you say, it's not necessarily guaranteed that they're dying, and the movie already sets up that you can have multiple doubles or yeah. what have you walking around. So did you did you think that the ending was a twist? With okay, so for me, the biggest twist was Borden's revelation yeah so like the twist where he's he's been killing himself in the tank so that is that is a twist but it didn't hit me as hard because i said okay that's wow but i assume something is like a like a reveal yeah but i'm like but it's not well it was a reveal in the sense that i may not have necessarily known exactly what was happening yeah but it's fairly obvious that you have two options either there's 10 million engineers walking around or they're killing themselves i also think they butchered the moment which if you notice in inception they they give it it's like seconds to breathe this one is like as soon as you see hugh jackman in the tank it cuts black. to black and then some weird song comes on yeah and it's like uh... immediately and you're like wait what the fuck <laughs> but yeah for me the biggest the biggest twist was borden borden's revelation and you get the parallels between so, doing something with insane science versus very yeah. basic so I something i learned mm. from this movie and and actually from nolan is like you say the ending in the movie you say what the ending is you say what is going to happen and he says it constantly it. he says he's got a double michael That's kane is literally like it. it's a double like there's no other way and it's so brilliant the way that he just makes you think like the movie itself is the is a is a magic act. Yeah, it's, mm-hmm. it's got the three parts, and that's like you know he he writes it very layered. Um, I did I think this time around I really appreciated like what you just mentioned the the story of a guy who's seemingly doing impossible magic, which is kind of like the essence of magic is that it seems impossible, mm-hmm. and and then the guy who's so obsessed with figuring out the magic that he ends up like figuring it out for real. But of course it's like, there's a cost to it, a real cost to it because to do it for real is completely something else entirely. And then at the end you reveal like, no, it was just magic. It was just a simple, like in front of your eyes. Yeah. Sleight of hand. It's mm-hmm. just something you didn't consider, which is that I have a twin. Now, um, when, when you have, and also remember he tells you, he tells you the ending of the whole board and twist. He tells it to you at the beginning of the movie, him and Hugh Jack or Christian Bell and Hugh Jackman are standing there looking at the Chinese guy, the way who's he, dedicated to his craft, dedicated yeah. to his craft. He lives in the role. That's Christian Bale saying that. Yeah. He, and then he's like, he must walk like a cripple every day. So people would believe it when he walks like a cripple on stage right there. It's telling you mm-hmm. Christian Bale is dedicated to the craft. He's been living the role. He's waiting for his moment to like reveal the trick. It's hard. I think they were both living as Borden. Yeah, and they point. were both living as Fallon. Like they some... sw- they switched off. Well, no, but Fallon they, they, uh... didn't exist until they decided they were going to do the trick. They were not both living as Fallon. That is one of the reasons why Fallon would could not take custody of the daughter. They said this guy has like a completely like oh okay I see what you're background. saying background. He has no that. history. They were both living as Borden. That's why they were. Remember when he met his wife, uh, whatever her name was, mm-hmm. Sarah or something? I don't know. Yeah. Um, no, Sarah was Jackman's wife. Um, I, I don't remember her name. But Angier's no, wife? No, Borden's wife. The one who hanged herself. Um, I thought it was a, Sarah. No, Sarah is the one who drowned in the tank. 
um it's it's the woman who played the villain in iron man 3 i forget her name okay um, so remember he says goodbye to her at the door and then he's inside her apartment mm-hmm. and it's like played for a laugh that they're both boarded at that time they're just dressing identical but um that part really doesn't make sense they couldn't both exist like one would have to be in hiding all the time oh you have to kind of like ignore that part um but you could if you were younger like hey we we love magic what if we like pretended that we could teleport and there's only one of us and then they start living that lie and then they move to a different place it's, you know it's not in the internet age like you could just disappear and reappear and it's like the same guy i have a uh, two twin students right now that are twins and um i i don't know which one is which like, <laughs> like i can't tell i mean i only have one in class and and she has a twin sister and i when i see them in the halls i pretend like i don't see them because i don't know which one is my student <laughs> Like, I really don't know because I don't even see the other one really, except for random times. They look really similar. So I can't tell the difference between them. Um, so, like, you could do it, I guess. Um, mm-hmm. uh, what else? What do you guys think about the whole Tesla part? So, that to me was one of the most unexpected turns of the movie, not a twist per se, but just so when he arrives at the start in Colorado Springs. And he's, you know, searching for Borden's secret. And he was going to Tesla. I, I, I didn't expect it to go into full sci-fi, if that makes sense. Because the, the way the movie has presented itself at the beginning is the idea that it's it's a movie about magic and craft, but real, quote-unquote, world magic, where it's all a trick. Mm-hmm. Um, I did not expect it to lean so heavily into sci-fi. I was also expecting Andy Serkis's character to end up being Tesla, just pretending to be his. You know that was David it... Bowie, right? Yeah. No, Bowie... I didn't actually. Bowie played oh. Tesla. That's interesting. I was expecting uh, and uh, Andy Serkis's character to end up being, oh, I'm actually Tesla. I'm pretending to be my own servant to talk with you, but that didn't happen. Um. It was interesting. Uh, I hate I, the I myth that, around Tesla. Yeah, well, they kind of showed him to like, like why his reputation was destroyed or something like that. They did touch on that. I thought there was going to be a different twist because I kind of forgot. But they never really show you. So we're supposed to understand that Borden has also made the same pilgrimage to Tesla and asked for the machine. I took it was all a lie. No, but but they show Borden doing his machine. They only show it once later in the film. He's on stage with the like electricity, mm-hmm. and he's doing it again. But my mm-hmm. see this this is what I was like. He wanted the same machine that Borden had made, and I thought that it was part of the act that Borden wanted him to make a machine that like shoots electricity and acts like it's doing something, but it doesn't have to actually do anything because he has the double. So, so when he says, make me the machine that you made for Borden and then the hat stays where it is. And I'm thinking that's the machine he asked for. I thought that was the twist is like, no, that you don't have, but I remember that he was going to clone himself eventually. So I was like, I don't know where this is going, but I don't understand why Borden would go ask for that machine. If he didn't need it. But I thought when Borden talks about his diary, he says, this was all made up nonsense. I just led you on a goose chase. Tesla has nothing to do with anything. Yeah, that was my question as well. well where, did he come up, where did he come up with Tesla? as like Well, the... he was at the same. Um, oh, yeah, they were. At the he same. was at the Watch same. Him. Yeah, the same tech expo. So uh, I, I'm guessing like for, for Borden's act, he did have. Um, he did have like something to make it seem like, oh, no, it's. It's a machine, like, you know what I mean? I, I see, but the thing is, the diary doesn't make sense otherwise because he, he acknowledges in the end of the coded diary, I'm just making everything up to fuck with you. But, but then Tesla, when he says, I want you to make this machine that you made for Borden, he, I took it as Tesla's just insane. He's, I I don't know if that works. Yeah, because doesn't he um doesn't he also say like you made the machine and they don't really deny it, and yeah, then they later when deny it yeah later when but he they calls never... him out he's like you took my money you led me on a like a wild goose chase he's like 
I forget what Tesla and his assistants say in response. Because like they show him the machine, they show him that it works, but they they use like a an excuse almost. Well, when when you're talking about when the hat doesn't clone. No, I'm I, I, I'm talking about like after the reveal that the diary was fake and he's been led on this goose chase the entire time. He goes to Tesla and his assistant and he says, well, you've been stealing my money. I've been your last financier. Like, remember, like all the Edison goons are walking around the hotel. Like, yeah, like, I've been your last financier. You've been you've been using me. You've been using my money. And he's like, we've not been using your money. Uh, we've actually been doing this for you. And then he brings up the fact that uh, he asked if he had made the machine for someone else, and they never really deny it. I forget what they say exactly, though, because then they cut immediately to him showing uh, them teleporting the cat for the first time and not the hat. And then they, they show him in the field with all the clones. I'm just I'm, I'm forgetting like the small like little snippet of time in between. OK, here here's. I found something, and this kind of confuses me even more. Um, so, so you can see this is Borden, right? Mm hmm And this is Tesla's machine. Mm hmm But here it says, Tesla never built a teleportation machine for Borden, and Angier has been sent on a wild goose chase. That's so, what I'm saying. So he copied it. Because he's got something. Like, he copied the design. He just didn't need it. Right. It's spectacle. Yeah. But then why wouldn't Tesla be like, I don't know, I never made this fucking machine for anyone else. See, that's where I, I'm He's confused. an eccentric nut. And, and so they're saying that Tesla was asked to make a machine that he's already made. He said, yes, I'll do it. And then somehow, like, cracked a part of science well, that like doesn't exist. And... He's if you're gonna take what the movie's trying to portray him as, he's this genius who understands things um, that p other people do not. Um. See, look, it even says. Yeah, he says he never built one, but like, why? I mean, he has one, so he copied the design for the show to make it seem like there was some type of magic happening, whatever, which is fine. But why doesn't Tesla say, I never did it? And are you saying that he cracked teleportation trying to recreate a machine that he knows he never made? I mean, he's Tesla. Do they do they ever explicitly state that he wants him to build a teleportation machine? He only ever says, I want you to build the machine. The machine that you, you made built for, for my Gordon. friend. Yeah. Yeah. So he, and he should be like, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Yeah, so what if he comes back and it's just like a cookie making machine or some other stupid shit? Like it had nothing to do with teleportation when he asked. So, I mean, unless he did it by accident somehow. Yeah, we're not gonna be able to find it. Yeah, there's too much the word has become So I, I don't understand that part. I don't know. Um but what else? You know, it's interesting. I feel surprised that Nolan never worked with Hugh Jackman again. Yeah, because when I was watching this, you see a lot of actors, uh, actresses. I, I, I like that he reuses again. a lot of people, but I also like that he tends to pick um, like the star to be just that one off. So he had Guy Ritchie. Uh, if you count Insomnia, I think it's uh, Al Pacino. Um, although he doesn't really fit with the rest of them. Um, he has Christian Bale mm -hmm. for Batman. He has Hugh Jackman. He has uh, Leonardo DiCaprio. He has Matthew McConaughey. He is reusing Killian Murphy, which is a departure. For like the lead guy, that's usually not a redo. Although I guess you could count Christian Bale for this one. Who's no, the guy from he, Memento? That, uh, that's he, Guy Ritchie, isn't it? That's Guy Ritchie, okay. Um, cause Christian Bell was the star first and then he was in this movie where he wasn't like the star. It's more Hugh Jackman's story. I think, um, trying to think any other exceptions. Oh, tenant. Uh, yeah, that wasn't Robert Pattinson. Yeah, but he didn't reuse him before. 
so that counts like he's a new star mm -hmm. um yeah i guess killian murphy is the one that he's like reusing from a previous co-star um okay what else um i was gonna say that uh you know when the reveal is made that borden there's two of them um looking back you can clearly see the signs the arguments with his wife uh, uh yeah one day you the, love me one day you don't yeah the different attractions the um fact that he's constantly hiding himself that he's suspicious mm -hmm. so one one question i have that i thought of and i'm not entirely certain if this is real so after he ties the knot that results in injure's wife dying he says i don't know which one i used were they switching off which is why the different knots were being used yeah mm-hmm so he says he doesn't know because he's not sure what the other guy did. Because yeah, because it was the other guy that did it. The other guy is not sure what he did. Which it's a little odd because does that it mean odd, he yeah. spoke to that one twin every single time he asked, or did that just mean he he asked them both at least once? He and asked. They both them. said the same thing. One obviously wouldn't know. And the other one seems to not know what what that's the odd part is like how does the one who tied it not know? It it would be a little better I think if you know the answer sort of subtly changed. So one time he says I don't know. I don't, I don't know remember. enough about knots, but in that scene, doesn't she clearly like nod him? To yes, do a and that type of knot. Well, she nods, but he also does two different types of knots, and it's not explained whether. He starts with the dangerous one and then changes yeah, it to the unsafe know. one, and they know. He definitely or... changes it, so he definitely knows. I don't know why he wouldn't say like she she asked me to, and like he could still get the full blame for that. Still, um, the I don't and know part. I'm like, but you did it. I don't. That's know. just some of the movie nonsense where characters don't always explain themselves well. So, um, like I'm saying, the this movie. Is has almost all the pieces of his later movies, but you could see he's getting better. I still mm -hmm. maintain like he peaks at Inception. Interstellar is great. It's like right beneath it, I think. And what is it? Is it Tenet that comes after that? I think so. If you, Dunkirk, I don't even count. Maybe, um, yeah. Oh yeah, was that a Nolan movie? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Dunkirk? There's Dunkirk. a there's there's five that. movies after Inception. Dark Knight Rises, Interstellar, Dunkirk, Tenet, and then Oppenheimer, Oppenheimer's coming out. Okay, so Dark Knight Rises sucks, but that's a whole different thing. Um, Dunkirk is worse than Interstellar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, it's also a different type of movie. And we all know where Tenet is. Yeah, but in terms of the like the concept that he's trying to push, which is like time happening like relatively it they tried. Like it's the production value is very high, but it is pretty confusing like by the end you're like oh it's it's sort of happening at the same time was so that the whole to... point of the movie because like <laughs> it, it doesn't seem to be much else like going on so out of curiosity real quick do you think just in terms of film do you think the dark knight is better than this movie no no okay because in order it would go this, this is came a pretty out... good movie this movie came out two years later the dark knight comes out and then two years later inception comes uh, comes out that would technically mean like he had his bell, like you know, like his almost top three in a row, and then he started to drop off a little bit. Batman Begins is above Dark Knight. Okay, so four in a row. I mean, we have to watch Memento. Mm -hmm. Um, I remember Memento being pretty good, but I haven't seen it since I was like fifteen or something. Memento is a, it's a lot more confusing if I remember correctly, but it, yeah, I, but he, I remember he being does good. it right. Like he does it right. It's like like. It's like he, he makes a movie that's about a premise, which is like time backwards or time like happening at the same time or like something like that. And then he starts to evolve into, okay, now put in like a real character story. Now put in the twist ending. Like he's evolving each time into something else. And then he starts to regress, which is like what Dunkirk is, which is like, hey, I'm telling a war story. But, before, but more important is the fact that it's like a weird time thing. <laughs> And it's like, okay, that's not more important than like just telling a good story. But he like seems to have like lost that. And even Interstellar is like, it's it tells a really good, like heartfelt story, but then it devolves into just pure sci-fi, like wrap your head around this crazy shit type of stuff at the end. And you're like, okay, like 
you had me and now I'm like walking out of the theater kind of dissatisfied. Not that it was a bad movie, but like something went wrong there. It, whereas you compare it to Inception, the ending is all about him, but layered within this, the like the twist, the concept. Um, mm -hmm. And then you get to Dunkirk, like we said, and then there's Tenet, which is just, it really loses, like, it tries to do... The All the Tenant story. has is the weird time thing that's happening. And the weird time thing that's happening is confusing and weird. Yeah, and, and there is a story in there, but, like, I, I couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell you what. I don't even remember. It was and so... the protagonist. It was so, yeah. like The, the fact, fact that, that they call themselves the protagonist. doesn't have a name. Like, I'm, I'm here for the heartfelt story within the cool premise. You forgot the, the heartfelt story. You gave me a cool-ish premise. And upon further investigation, it's like, I can't even follow this shit. So you, like, what you need did something I, to have the audience be invested. Yeah, like what did we walk out of the theater? I mean, we didn't see it in the theater, thank God. But what, what would you walk out of that movie thinking like, that's what I got from this? What I walked out of it thinking is initially I was, you know, there's a lot of spectacle. Not as good spectacle as in other movies, but there is a lot of spectacle. And I was like, okay, that's kind of cool. And then, you know, I started thinking about it. And my immediate response was, well, maybe I don't understand the story because it's too high level. And then I kept thinking about it and I talked with you guys and I just, the story it doesn't make sense. It's just weird. Compare it to Elden Ring, right? Like, so you see like the character design of, of these monsters and you're like, that's pretty fucking cool what's what else is going on there and it's like well there is something going on with that story and character but you don't care like it's not worthy like yeah. it really doesn't make much sense it's pretty like i'd have level. to like decipher 10 billion words that i've never heard of just to, to... just to find out that the story is not that interesting and i'm betting you that if you boil it down to like brass tacks the story is just gonna be someone did something things fell apart this is the yeah. remnants, yeah, something that's, like that's that. That's basically it. Yeah. So, like, I'm I, so I, having gone through this, I want to see Memento because I remember that being pretty good, which curious, I've also never seen. I'm so. curious to see if the balance is like more on the concept or more on the story because mm -hmm. I I remember it being well balanced. Um, but this is another one of his good movies. So the question for next week is. So when, when you talk about the prestige, I don't know, I'm surprised you guys haven't heard of it, but most people talk about the illusionist instead. And they think it's better. More people saw the illusionist for whatever reason than the prestige. I don't know why. I never saw the illusionist. I saw the prestige, but for me it was like, oh, that's the guy who made Batman, and that's the guy who played Batman. So like I'm gonna go see it. So are you suggesting maybe we watch the illusionist? They're always directly compared. They're like siblings. I would be down because I know nothing about it either. So and I've I would... always been like, I should watch that and see. And like this would be the best time, even though Memento's next, um, to yeah, directly compare. So let's do it. Yeah, they came out the same year. I see that that comparison. It's so with we, Edward Norton. We yeah. used to get movies like this where you get two very high class movies these days we get white house down and olympus has fallen coming out at the same time yeah I don't know. um i'm yeah. totally down to do illusionist yeah we could do that okay um all right so let's move on to roundup i, I uh the fight of the week was very brief oh, okay. and it was just who do you think is more at fault who is the more who is the bad guy in this between Borden and Angier. Angier. Interesting. Because it all started with the death of the wife. But that is one of Borden's fault. It is, but she's she's tying herself up in a tank. Like at some point you gotta know, like, like this is a weird situation. <laughs> like, hey, maybe don't kiss her leg when she's supposed to be focusing on saving her life or some shit like that. Like that you signed up for this shit. Can, and, can I ask you guys a question real quick, just to not to cut you off, but what was the point of them asking? Do you remember at the very beginning after she dies, Michael Caine starts talking about how someone replaced a lock on that tank with a real one He's versus a fake about one. When Borden seeing Angier. Yeah. Okay. That's him like giving testament. But um, oh, now I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, yeah. How about their system for breaking someone out? Remember, they have a lot axe. of time 
to plan for this. There should be a false panel in but there. Let's let's use an axe that doesn't even work. Like it doesn't work. They can't break the glass with it. It took like ten minutes. That's what I'm saying. There should be a false panel in the thing. So maybe you it's can just Carter's. Hit it. uh, maybe it's his fault. Because or it was like interesting for in me because the water. each one of them, they keep escalating past. So each one of them does something and says, fine, I've I've done my, I've gotten them back. And then the other escalation, well, now I have to get revenge. Um, And that to me is a very human, very real I like problem. that part. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like it too because they're, they're creating their own cycle of self-destruction. And that's a pretty common thing where someone says, okay, I got you, you got me, now we're even. But the person that you just got says, no, 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 you just got me. I'm getting you, you back. Do you know the other thing that doesn't make much sense is um, Scarlett Johansson talks about how she knows it's a it's not a double because they're both missing a finger and you can tell. And so she's she's got a pretty keen eye like to be able to spot that, but she can't tell that Fallon is Christian Bale like a double. Like she's seen the wigs, she's seen the stuff, she sees it on that guy's face. He still looks like Christian Bale. She can't put that together. They're literally sitting at table together. Yeah, that scene was funny in hindsight because that was basically their best attempt at a double date. Yeah, <laughs> where everyone gets to be with who they want. And and was it were they trying to say like Fallon is dating Scarlett Johansson? Because I actually took that scene in hindsight as Fallon, Fallon's Borden, was the one who liked the normal his normal wife and. The guy yeah. who was born was. was dating Scarlett yeah. Johansson. It was. Yeah. yeah, but like, what, what does was. the wife think is happening? <laughs> I don't know, but also in hindsight, they definitely should have switched. Like, it made no sense to have the one who liked Scarlett Johansson dressed yeah. up as Borden in that scene. They should have switched. Yeah. How do you I guess you could write it off as, "Hey, it's the whole crew going out with Borden's wife." I suppose. Yeah. How do you think she would have reacted if, like? Just say hypothetically, like she's going through that breakdown. She's about she's on the verge of suicide and he snaps and says, "Okay, here's how I do it. And he brings in the twin and they're both just standing there in front of her. How do you think she reacts when she sees that there's two of them? Yeah. I mean, she kills herself because she's starting to suspect something. Well, she kills herself because she can't handle the fact that he has like a split personality and she can't figure Um, it out. I think she probably leaves him, freaks out and leaves him for at least a bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then his his uh, you know she tell people, and then he'd have to kill her. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, okay, round up. Um, round up. House I, of the Dragon. Well, let's start with She Hulk. I thought She Hulk okay. was a pretty like. It's the most filler episode they had. I didn't get around to watching it this week. What happened? I I'm trying to remember. <laughs> it actually is not great um she goes to court against titania and wins and she gets a superhero suit made by a guy that's like a very like flamboyant stylist who makes superhero clothes like super flamboyant and um at the end they tease daredevil's yellow helmet in his like shop Mm mm-hmm so, like, this is how the street level heroes are getting their outfits made. He's also in LA, keep in mind. Okay. And, um, so yeah, she basically just wins the court case battle with like the help of, I, I don't know, it was like some other actress. I don't know if we've seen her before, but, um, I don't know. It, it wasn't, it wasn't a bad show. Like, I still like Tatiana Maslani, and I think that she's funny, and I think the show is still kind of funny. Um, but there was almost zero plot in that one. Um, straight filler, if you ask me. Because they contrived that whole thing like, oh, I'm getting sued. And then the next episode is like, I won. And it, there's almost like nothing to it. Um, and then there's just superhero suit. And this is this is devolving into, okay, superhero suit now. Like, really? Because you were, this show waited until the fourth episode to really start getting into like superhero stuff. And I think it was better off because of that. And now we're getting into who's really put behind the scenes and all that kind of crap. And so it's probably on a downward trajectory. <laughs> um, House of the Dragon. I didn't finish the episode. Um, I oh, yeah, I finished both. Um, I'm not that into it. Yeah, I was talking to someone about this. I'm not sure if I like it or not. And, and, and I mean that in the truest sense of the word, 
I like because it, but well, there are in there are individual aspects that I like. You know, the world, the yeah. politicking. However, there's a lot of odd things happening, and it's not entirely clear. I th- I think maybe it's not entirely clear what the meat of the show is going to be, because it's almost like they're spending all this time setting up all yeah. the characters and the world to then do the show. I heard a rumor that this next episode, episode five, is the last episode we have the younger actors. And yeah, actresses. and that's what I'm waiting for. Is like I'm giving them time. They're setting something up. I don't know where it's going. I suppose I could look it up. Um, I'm going to go on a wild guess and say that she's going to marry the young boy, Targaryen. And, and that will be like the time jump is her dealing with that afterwards. I don't know. I don't know where the show is. Like, I haven't given up on it. But Jade was too tired to watch the last 20 minutes. And I'll be honest, I haven't really cared to put it back on. Like, I might mm-hmm. watch it before we watch the new episode. But then I'll feel like an hour and 20 minutes, eh. You should probably watch the last 20 minutes. Because there's some things that I think I are... mean, I will if I, if I am intending to continue to watch it. Yeah. I mean, I'm definitely going to watch the entirety of this season. I have HBO Max. I, I want to see what's going to happen. Um, but as I said, I'm not sure if I like it, or I'm not that, sure if it, that episode, that that scene at the end of the third episode where with Damon, Damon like takes on that whole. Yeah, thing. I that's what I was talking about with the plot armor. They they're trying to, like, they try to say like, oh, he did a bold gambit, and then people came and like saved him, and that's how he did it. But I'm like, even what you showed him doing is absurd. Yeah. Like, really, like, I, I'm not, I liked it because it felt like a realistic, like, like story. Like, they have money problems. Like, they have actual, like, manpower problems. They don't just have armies appearing out of thin air. Like, it's not like Lord of the Rings where it's like, oh, there's all these people here and all these orcs. And, like, they just sort of come around. This one is like, you, you, you supposedly know how many people are, like, in that city. And like there are real numbers on how big a certain person's army is, and so when he runs in and takes on like that entire little rebel force or whatever that is, whatever I don't know the sand crappy. What are they called? I don't know. That's like the triarchy, the admiral. Yeah, the whatever. Triarchy. He goes in there and he fights like fifty of them at once. I'm like, this dude is not a superhero. I know, and all the arrows are missing, and he's yeah. surrounded by a million of them, and that sounds weird. I'm I'm barely through episode like two I think so that's it's a little odd. I mean the first episode was good. I remember episode two being a little slower. The third one was all right. The fourth one gets weird. So we'll see what happens in the fifth one. Um, I do feel like I'm watching an actual show though. Yeah. Which is like I don't think I'm watching any other actual show. Right well, now. I think that's but why now. that I'm willing to give it. I want to see where it's going because I think it's fairly obvious that they want to introduce these characters and they want to introduce these events to us so that later this is something we can think back something, to. Yeah. I'm yeah. wondering, does, uh, does Damon Targaryen make it out of the, this period of time? Yeah. That's interesting because we haven't heard of him having a second actor. I'm pretty sure the, the, the lore for this entire thing is already written. It yeah. Is. But I don't want to spoil it for myself. So, uh, you know, okay. On the flip you side, know, does Everett, anyone he loves to say no spoilers and then immediately spoil things. And I'm not gonna. I don't. I don't know it myself. So any, um, no spoilers. But the next boss in Elden Ring is. I was gonna. I was gonna ask you guys. Has anyone you touched the boss? <laughs> has anyone touched the Lord of the Rings show? At no, all? and I'm not going to because I think Lord of the. Rings I heard it was okay, but okay. I just can't bring myself to. Hey, you I, know what? I need better than just okay. Well, I mean, you're watching She-Hulk. Yeah. She-Hulk's twenty minutes. That's true. Like I'm not watching Rings of Power an hour. I'm probably going before. to check it out once the season is completely out. Like I'll watch the first episode, and if it's so, if I'm like, eh, maybe. But I just can't. I really can't be bothered to watch it. Yeah, I heard like everyone's also She Hulk is it. not as bad as like many of the other shows. Like I think it might be the best one, honestly. Better than Kamala Khan. Yeah. She Hulk hmm. and Rings of Power, I both saw were getting like really review bombed. But at least with She Hulk, I'm still hearing about it. Bombed. Women King yeah. is also getting review bombed. But Lord of the Rings, at least I haven't really heard much about it in the last like week and a half. So yeah, that's probably not a good sign, honestly. Yeah. Yes. I don't. It's weird. Lord of the Rings is like very popular, but not as popular as you would think, given how much 
Like certain people love it. I think there's a demographic cutoff with Lord of the Rings. I really do. Because I don't think I younger people care. I guess. I don't know. Still, like... Like, the I people who liked it were the ones who grew up reading the books or who grew up watching those three original movies, I think. I, I kind of wonder, like, what's the... for Like, what you're saying, like for younger people, like, if they get experience with Game of Thrones first and no, then they decide to switch younger people, to... it's 100% Cardi B... Uh, what that show she fucking has? Well, he's Am I being about fantasy? Oh, for fantasy, um, like if they start with Game of Thrones, Lord of the Rings is pretty bland. And... Yeah, that's what I was trying I to agree. say. I mean, I started with Game of Thrones. I watched the movies as a kid, but they didn't appeal to me. Mm. I don't know. I but but the other thing is, I think like younger people today. I don't know. Like really young people aren't even watching Game of Thrones, so I don't know what the You'd hell. You'd be surprised. Doing. Like I have my background is like some concept art from Game of Thrones, and uh, one of my students saw it, a ninth grader student, and is like, "Mister, I thought the ending was so bad." <laughs> like you're 14, <laughs> and that was what four years ago. I so mean, I don't, I don't know. See, but she... that sounds more like hearing people say it. Repur- re- like... I, she said she watched it. I mean, I don't in, know when... in that defense. Like back when we were in high school, like you know, like ninth grade, I had friends that were talking about Game of Thrones, you know, talking about like the ending and the like with the White Walker and stuff like that. So younger people have been watching it since it's been out. So I mean Yeah, I don't know that it could mean that she watched it like this summer because it's on streaming, but but their generation is aware of it. Yeah, but I also wonder, I don't know if um it fantasy as a genre is winding down in a lot of ways. Because it's not as good as sci-fi. <laughs> yeah, but it's also, I think, the society we live in, right? Because fantasy relies a lot on this idea of, you know, undiscovered and magic and unknown. I, see, I don't think so. I think I fantasy think it relies heavily on just pure good versus evil, and people rarely go beyond that. That's why Game of Thrones, I, I think, is way more interesting because it, ha- it has, like, money <laughs> problems, politics, economy, like societal structures it has a lot of that all mixed in there's like religion there's there's a whole lot of layers to the world which make it more accessible for someone like me who's like okay i understand this is like the fantasy version of like my regular life like i understand the components of this person the way that they fit into the world i can see that when you tell me like gandalf the gray becomes gandalf the white i'm like i don't know what the fuck you're talking about like but what I am think I supposed I, to do with that information? And I don't disagree, but I think that's that's um a symptom. The good versus evil is part of what makes fantasy like in the same time. But a lot of fantasy yeah, but, is like the world, the magic, like the undiscovered, the unknown. Whereas it I all think amounts sci-fi, to like good guys versus bad guys. And the thing is, everything else also has good versus evil. Like it's not really bringing anything to the table other than like sword fights and spells. That's true, but a lot of crappy sci-fi is essentially just fantasy in space. Ergo, Star Wars. A lot of crappy sci-fi, but there's also a lot of good sci-fi. Yeah. There's a lot of good sci-fi still being made. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but how much how much good fantasy is being made? Like, Rings of Power seems to not be so great. House of the Dragon is a pretty quality show. But even that is like, you know, they burn some bridges with the with the finale so what else i mean would you count shows like vikings to be like fantasy-esque no because no, that's historical <laughs> fiction yeah yeah big difference like i watched vikings even though yeah. it's like old time well, or, or like the last duel is historical fiction it's not fantasy just because it's medieval yeah um not at all. which i like that yeah um I, as soon as people start like casting spells I'm I'm basically out. <laughs> like, I guess The Witcher is fantasy, and even that actually, yeah, as we'll I see guess. in our new section, it might be on its last breath. Oh, you know good! Why? It's because the world doesn't make a lot of sense. The weakest parts of Game of Thrones is when it's like magic, and you're like, "Huh? How did this happen?" Like, yeah, you, that's true. You're telling me the Lannisters are super strong, and you have all this backstory with their money and their history and all that, and then there's this other guy, and he just casts spells and like. 
and, and I you think don't really he, tell yeah. me what the deal is. And like sci-fi can make up stuff that's the equivalent of magic, but it's much easier to explain a science fiction. It's like, yeah, it's a technological advance. What do you want? Like, yeah. I kind of I kind of like it when authors or filmmakers sort of mix the two, because in my opinion, like magic and science are two separate ways to get to the same answer. And I like it when you can see that comparison. But anyway, has the third season of The Witcher even come out? No. Okay. The Witcher season four and five rumored to shoot back to back is the end nigh for popular Netflix series. I never watched season two. People got you know, mad at season two. People got mad. Okay. I never read the book. Was it good? I don't think so. <laughs> Was it bad? I wouldn't say it's bad. So, but if you read the books and you're like, it could have been so much better. Like I get that for me as a show, it lost a lot of, what was sort of interesting to me, which is like him going around fighting monsters, like kind of like on a weekly basis and just like meeting the people of the world. It became more about Siri and like that kind of stuff. Um, a positive update. Uh, so the current plan is to shoot Witcher's fourth and fifth season back. I mean, this does sound like the end of the show to me to put him back to back. You're like, we're just, we're pushing through. This is going to be it. Um, and I bet you the budget's going to suffer because of that. Um, uh, no intention to cancel the show after the third season, but there was speculation after the mixed response to season two. Um, I mean, Henry Cavill, I think, is he sounded like he was not happy with season two. He likes the books, and you know, they were doing weird shit. Um, I don't even know. Like it says that there's a lot of material, but I don't know if I trust that. <laughs> so, yeah, materials. Um, Captain America: New World Order star Tim Blake Nelson on getting return as the leader. You guys remember him? Yeah, mm-hmm. he was from the original Incredible Hulk. So, movie. Liv Tyler, who was probably my favorite part of that movie, is the only one who hasn't been brought back. They really are sexist. They didn't bring back uh, what's her name as um, Mary Jane. They didn't bring back. <laughs> they Tyler. also sort of replaced her as like any love interest for Bruce Banner, which kind of sucks. Replaced Betty. Well, remember, like uh, he had a uh, he had Black Widow, and and then she died. So yeah, so she's so technically he's available <laughs> for a new love interest. I just don't think. I just like it seems like they're gonna send him to space and shit. Oh my god, he he finds her in space. <laughs> that also, the fucking thing about, quote. Oh, what? go ahead. The thing about Betty is that she can calm the Hulk down, but he doesn't. He doesn't really need, need that. that. Yeah, that fucking quote there. It's we are all paranoid. And hopefully, we're all thrilled. This is a movie. I I thought I thought after Captain America movies, there it just stopped. This is a movie, like the previous Captain America movies. <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck? I mean, he is still saying nothing. Like this is a movie, like the previous Captain America movies, that leans into the tradition of this genre. What the fuck does that mean? It leads into like simplistic plot, low character development, pure like teaser. Well, I think he's trying to connect that back to Civil War and Winter Soldier is what he's trying to do with that statement. Well, he didn't have anything to do with those movies, so. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Can can I tell you guys something really quick that kind of made me laugh that happened this week? So I I, I got an interesting experience to see into the mind of like the the average moviegoer. So I was talking with my parents and my parents just watched – Thor Love and Thunder for the first time because it's out on Disney Plus now. And they, they love Ragnarok. They think Taika Waititi is very funny and they like all his movies. Uh, I asked them what they thought of the of the new Thor movie and they thought it was garbage. They thought it was horrible. Really? Yeah. Uh, they couldn't even get through it. They Did watched you point like out that, it, that Ragnarok is basically the same movie? Yeah, I, I've been telling them that Ragnarok is basically the same. Crusade. <laughs> I, 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 I tell everyone that I know that it's Ragnarok is It's not enough to hate the new one. You must acknowledge the it's, last It's one. almost the same exact movie. The only I'll, difference I'll consider it a win if I can convince them that both movies suck. I, I got mean, one. What will happen is later on they might go back and revisit those movies. And now that the hype is gone and now that they remember how good Ragnarok was, they're going to go back and be like, actually, this is not that good. Yeah. That's probably what's going to happen. What the fuck is this? Um, so this is the, uh, they didn't have a post credit scene, but the teaser. Uh, um, 
they try to get some business suits for her. Then she goes for a fitting and he hands her a little something extra. That's a superhero costume we've seen in the TV shots. Um, as the tailor makes his way through his workshop, he picks up another item that he's been working on, placing it to one side before putting in the lid on the box. We briefly get to see that the mask inside belongs to Daredevil. Now yellow instead of red. It's instantly recognizable and a strong indication that the man of fear or man without fear will appear in next week's episode. Whatever. Mm -hmm. Looks like it's the there trash it can. Like one of those fancy trash cans. I, I saw that the, the one thing I did say about that episode was they had like their art that appears in the credits that they always have showed like a bunch of shoes that had a bunch of different Marvel heroes that haven't showed up yet in the MCU, so like Daredevil and Ghost Rider and Fantastic Four and stuff like that. Okay. So. so on Avengers Campus, the villain of whatever they're doing over there is King Thanos, who is the guy who won against the Avengers. So that's what mm. it looks like. Um, um, let's see. Future creations. I think I heard Marvel may want to use some of other characters I've done. Um, I don't know why it doesn't talk about why it doesn't it talk about Avengers Campus isn't that where it is and then just so we know what that is Avengers Campus is the thing over at Disneyland right here it is yeah in the new multiverse theme ride coming to Disneyland okay I mean I would be interested in more Thanos to be honest in like a different universe where people can actually die um Let's look at this. Check out the Secret Wars comic book moments we want to see in the movies. Death of the Marvel Universe. Uh, in the midst mm. of an incursion. I think we're probably going to see that. I think we're probably going to see an incursion. So we'll see. Of course, they're going to undo everything. But the face of doom. Don't care. Uh, betrayal. Uh, Doctor, while doom is the god of this new world, the fragments of reality he pulled together are far from perfect. That's where Stephen Strange comes in. Um, he's become friends with Doom. Okay. He brutally kills Doctor Strange. Doctor Doom kills Thanos. Okay. <laughs> Every time everyone kills Thanos. A moment of levity. Uh, Spider-Man. I mean, maybe I should read this at some point. They come face to face with Molecule Man. Turns out he's the glue at the center of this new reality holding it all together. Yeah, I don't think we'll see Molecule Man anytime soon. The Thing's Death. I'm okay with oh. dying. <laughs> the Infinity Gauntlet returns. I don't think I need to see that. Oh, I guess it was Black Panther who did it. Well, now sure he can do it. Um, <laughs> Chris Evans, Captain America could possibly do it. Doom's face is healed. Okay, whatever. Aladdin star, Amena Masu shares his reaction to missing out on Ezra Bridger role in Star Wars Ahsoka. Isn't Ezra, Ezra Bridger an established character? In the yes. He's, a, he's in Rebels. He's like one of the main characters of Rebels. Glad the rumors will stop now. Never really had a fair shot at it, unfortunately. But just wasn't meant for me, I guess. <laughs> okay. I guess he looks like him. I don't know. Yeah, I think the like there have been news reports saying like, he, he does cast. look like him. But I guess Batgirl sure. stars Michael Keaton and Brendan Fraser expressed disappointment over the movie's cancellation. Uh, oh. Michael Keaton, I think it was a business decision. It was a film. It was a good one. Um, will you see him as Batman? He says, oh, a little later tonight. No, I'm kidding. I don't know. I really have no idea. Brendan well, after Fraser his hit says, film, Morbius. What? After, he, his, after his hit film, Morbius. Who knows? The Michael Keaton. He's in Morbius? Yeah, remember he's he's oh like, uh, yeah at the post credit scene the post credit scene oh right. shows up. I too was confused. The fans but... really wanted to see this film made. Leslie Grace is a dynamo. I mean, they're saying this shit, but we like the rumors were saying the movie sucked. Yeah, Morbius is currently the second most popular <laughs> movie on Netflix. Yeah, morbid time, dude. I, I don't get what is up with this movie, like. It's, it's really people just want to see superhero crap. Still. Ultimately, this is not that bad in the like grand. It's actually perfect for Netflix. It's the kind of, the of movie you kind of put on in the background and like half pay attention to. Like it's perfect. It's gonna. It's just gonna tell the studio that people like it unironically, and then they're this, gonna make a sequel. The fact that they're making twenty billion spinoffs of every MCU and DC property, but for some reason Morbius is bad. Like these people are idiots. 
Ezra Miller rumored to be done with the Flash role. Yeah, okay. I feel like that's been coming for a while. Okay, last not, last thing we reported was they, they attended a meeting with the CEOs of Warner Brothers. He apologized. Uh, rumor states that the actor is indeed done. Not sure if good news or bad news, that's up to you, but I hear Ezra Miller is done with the Flash no matter what happens, not coming back. Um, what was the last really thing we said? Like he's in, he's in the... They really can't. They, they rebuild the entire series around Ezra Miller and he just goes insane. Didn't, I mean, they have that new guy in there. Um, I don't know. Laugh. I would maybe just reboot the whole thing. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, nope star Kiki Palmer is full uh, fully on board with playing Rogue in the MCU X-Men reboot. This is I like really that concept, right? Yeah, I mean, Rogue is Southern, isn't she? Yeah. So, like, I think she's got like that Southern Belle accent. I don't know the actress, but I kind of like that it would be like a different face. Mm-hmm. Um, Marvel Phase 4 rumor points to unexpected link between Shang-Chi and Miss Marvel's cosmic weapons. So they they have almost nothing in common, other than they are worn on your hand, but they are somehow connected by the same aliens or something. Well, it says it says up there that in the tomb where Kamala discovers whatever the Ten Rings icon is logo can be seen on the floor. Yeah, I remember seeing that. I don't care, honestly. Anything <laughs> that has to do with Shang Chi right now is kind of like. Timothy Chalamet reveals that no hard drugs, no superhero movies. Advice came from Leonardo DiCaprio. And then he's like, when she turns 25, she's out. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't, uh, I mean, okay, Dune isn't a superhero movie, but it's it's a, it's a major, like, heroic franchise. Yeah, well, it depends a... if they actually follow the story. It's not a superhero movie in the it, second one. But, but it's, it's a like... well-established, large spectacle type movie. So, I mean, it's, Yeah, but Leonardo yeah, DiCaprio way. does those too. Yeah, I, guess. I mean, he has. I don't think DiCaprio makes a whole lot of sense for a superhero movie, other than to play like a one-off villain. But even that, like you've seen all the people playing one-off villains, like Christian Bale in a bullshit ass role, Kate Blanchett in a bullshit ass role, like so many other great actors just in bullshit ass roles. So, like, yeah, it doesn't. I don't know that you really like. He doesn't need to do it. Most of the time, they're like, does does Leonardo DiCaprio have kids? Because 99% of the time, they're like, my kids told me I have to do it. Um, does, I'm sorry, does that woman have a, a Jewish yes, star Yes, this is forehead? the Jewish superhero we reported on Captain America, time. New World Order, Marvel Studios response to backlash about Sabra's upcoming MCU debut. Uh, dude, um, did you see some of the stuff on... I saw some screenshots on Reddit where people are like, she's evil. And then, like, the it was devolving into hashtag Captain in the Marvel Universe. <laughs> is an Israeli police officer turned Mossad agent. Why? Well, Jewish Israelis have responded positively to the casting. Palestinians have hit back with hashtag Captain Apartheid hashtag. Marvel Studios has been accused of Zionist propaganda, claiming they're ignoring Israel's occupation of... (laughs) Okay. Of the Palestinian See, this is interesting too, though, because it's almost like you can't have an Israeli superhero because it's like, I don't know. Well, to Israeli Jews, Sabra means a person born in Israel. It's also the name of a refugee camp in Lebanon where a Christian militia massacred hundreds of Palestinians while Israeli troops stood by four decades ago. Now Marvel Studios has responded, making clear the hero will be updated for a modern audience. While our characters and stories are inspired by the comics, they are always freshly imagined for the screen in today's audience. And the filmmakers are taking a new approach with the character Sabra, who was introduced in the comics over 40 years ago. She likely won't be heading into battle with the Stark David around her neck. Well, guess the origin story is modernized. I'm confused though. Like, how are they? How are they ignoring? The, how are they doing where, Zionist where propaganda? How they've been. Yeah, ignoring Israel's occupation of power. Like, when did they ignore it? By having a Jewish character. See, this is where it gets a little weird. Like, I sometimes think people just become kind of anti-Semitic and are are like, you you can't have Israel or Jews because then you're accepting the occupation. I mean, Israel's in a weird place right now. They they don't have, like, they're not the victims that people used to think they were. They're not, but the problem is that, like, a lot of people go so far as to be like, you can't talk about them. I don't know. It's they exist. I mean, yeah, that's the debate. 
is like, should it exist, right? Isn't that the debate? That's one of the yeah. debates. But the yeah. problem is the, the, the real reality is it's like you have Israel launching apartheid, but then like a lot of the quote unquote their opponents are literally calling for the extermination of every the, person in Israel. So it's like yeah. you... Israel is doing apartheid, right? Yeah, it depends on how you define I mean, apartheid. It's pretty, it's pretty like aren't they like pulling people out of their homes and then giving it to Israelis? Yes, but That's then the problem straight, like... the problem is where it gets muddied is like you can be a non Jewish Arab in Israel if you're an Israeli citizen and like you are in theory are fine yeah and then it's like you can't be a jewish person like the there's a jewish ghetto in syria like so it, it's weird where it's like yeah. everyone involved in the fucking conflict is essentially either currently oppressing and quote-unquote genociding someone else or they want to do that but they don't have yeah. the power to yeah on both sides so yeah I would have just left this alone. Yeah, honestly. that's what I'm yeah. saying. Like, just stay the fuck out of Middle East. Uh, yeah. yeah, even like just the inclusion. Like, you're gonna bring up politics somehow. Like, you're gonna start a fight regardless of what you think or what side I, you're on. So, I mean, this could be really funny though. This is gonna cause some interesting controversy. I so mean, apparently, uh, yeah. in one of her comic here, I can find. Let me find this. But in one of her comic runs, my friend was talking about the controversy. I guess she like <laughs> kills a Palestinian child or something while trying to fight the Hulk. Let me see where it is. Uh, <sighs> you can keep going through. See, I would be annoyed like if I was Israeli and they're they're gonna put an Israeli hero and they're gonna make it all about like Palestinian Mossad, like all that shit again. I'm like, what about my culture? Like, what about celebrating the culture and not so much about like fucking terrorist shit? And they would do the same thing with Iran. So apparently in the comic, uh, she is the deluded bad villain of a Hulk comic. She thinks of herself as a hero and almost kills a Pakistani child. The climax of the comic is her realizing how misguided she is um, and realizing that she may not, in fact, be a hero. And she renounces yeah. the Jewish faith and switches to non-denominational Christian. No, she converts to Islam. <laughs> that is not going to go over well in a, in a shower movie. Like, they can't do that. They can't have her be like, maybe I'm not the hero. That I know, because then the Jewish people will be like, now yeah. you're being anti-Semitic. And you're... Which is, that's the audience. Like, the Palestinians aren't tuning in to... No matter it. what you say, you're going to Yeah, but there's ma- a lot of young angry. Westerners who are very pro-Palestine. That's so they'll the thing, tune in. That's the thing about um, Miss Marvel, which is like, Pakistan is a less controversial today. Country, yeah. Like, compared to, like, Iran. But at least they didn't make it all about, like, whatever's going on. Yeah, she's like, she's like, we need nuclear weapons to fight the Indians, like. Yeah, at least. Well, they explored the culture a little bit. Well, it seems like what you were saying about if they made an Iranian character, they, they're turning Sabra into a caricature of Israeli politics, essentially. Yeah. Instead of having her stand as her own character. It would be the equivalent of having, you know, Kamala Khan. She's constantly like, Islam, the prophet, like wars yeah. in the Middle East, colonialism. Like, yeah. Well, also, like, think about all the times you've seen the Middle East in movies and television, like the last like few movies, television shows we've seen, like more often than not, you know, it's war torn, it's military theme. There's always like that, like orangey filter over it that makes it seem a little bit more dark, at least with Miss Marvel. You got. Yeah, you're right. You got to see a little bit more vibrance. She was a it. real person instead of a caricature of her culture. Yeah. And you, you got to see the vibrance of it. You got to see like the people yeah. are kind and, you know, it had its actual it had a good culture. I like that. More people need to they're, do that. They're just setting up the next event, which is going to be called like MCU, like race war, and it's going to have Wait, like all the different cultures. Just so we're clear, it. like I'm, I would bet serious money that she's going to be like an Agent Thirteen type character, where she's not running around in the costume. She's just a person with a gun, like someone they're working with in the field, and she's like there to help out in the third act, and then she'll disappear so you can fight the main villain, like. It's probably not going to have anything to do mm-hmm. with Israel, really, other than there's like a terrorist bomb they're trying to stop in that city, and that's how they meet her. And then mm-hmm. she's just like along for the ride, some shit like that. She is the Iron Dome. She personally knocks out all the missiles from the sky. Um, Andor. Yes, Lucasfilm really did have plans for the Rogue One prequel to span mm-hmm. five seasons and 60 episodes. You know, a lot of people after this show are going to ask me if I named my son after Star Wars. <laughs> you played yourself, Kia. 
and I didn't. To be honest, he's actually named after Muhammad Ali. Cassius is the same name. Cassius. Um, we sort of signed up for five years. We thought there were going to be five seasons of this, and then thankfully Diego Luna was like, I'll die if I do five seasons. <laughs> yeah, because it's stupid. Why would you need five seasons of a spy story? So they condensed it into this amazing, I don't know how he's done it, but he has condensed. Tony Gilmore has managed to do one more season, and you're going to have so to do two one seasons? more. Okay. Okay. When you watch the trailer, do you get the impression that there's like actual story happening? No, it looks like a lot of spectacle. Yeah, I'd agree. But it does seem like they're like when you see the clips, they're like doing things that seem important. Like, it Maybe, seem but like the plot is moving in the in the trailer. It would have to be paced like a two part movie stretched into a series with enough stuff, because if it's like one season that is like one thing, and then the second season, now we have the new bad. It's like I don't think that. Would I work. guarantee you, there was a shit ton of filler in those five seasons. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and to cut it down to two could only be good. Yeah, they're gonna have to. Well, they're gonna have to accordion it. Like, they're here's, gonna have to slam that in. Here's something: Why Lucasfilm thought fans would want 60 episodes of television devoted to casting is hard to say. I'll tell you why: It's because they want subscriptions on Disney Plus. Yeah, money. It's really easy. <laughs> As for Gilroy, he wasn't phased. There's a new dial on everybody's console, which is how long should my story be? Is it three episodes? Is it seven? Is it twelve? What is it? You got to pick the right number. Yeah, you do. And by the way, you always had to. Like, there was never, like, anytime anyone said, like, it's got to be 13 episodes, that, that doesn't mean anything. It's not a good idea. I think that magic number is in somewhere between four and seven. No, I think it's 38. Because if it's too long, it's too filthy. Like, it's going to be too say that If ever. it's you too can't short. Say four or seven, because it you, depends on the story. You well, that, that's what I'm trying out. to say. No, you can't say it has to be a minimum of four. No, I'm not saying minimum. I'm saying that magic number because you you need you do need a minimum. One is a you, good for some. Yeah. What do you mean that magic? So you're saying every movie didn't hit the magic number? No, but I'm saying. Are you, you fucking wanna... saying that Israel deserves the Holy Land? No, I'm saying if you're making a television show and you want to stretch out the runtime a little bit more, why would you want to stretch it out? I think what Everett's trying to say is that most stories he feels in television can be told between four and seven episodes. And I think that's an arbitrary number, like. You I agree, but he's made his telling. decision, and now he has to dig himself into the hole. <laughs> Why four? Why four, Everett? Everett well, I say, you made okay. a mistake by I, I say four because film and television run four in, uh, hours. Film and television run a little bit differently from one another. Film is a little bit more condensed. You can get an entire story across in about an hour and a half to two hours, which works for some films, doesn't work for others. But for television shows, it works for some it, films or works for some stories. It works for some. Okay, that's a good way to put it. It works from some stories. So, so television. So you can make the argument that some stories would be perfect at two episodes. I mean, the, okay. The point I'm trying to get across <laughs> is you're. A, I'm assuming if you're making a television show out of a story like that, you want to expand it out a little bit more. You want to have time to explore the characters. You want to explore the plot. You want to learn a little bit more about the world you're setting into. And for Only that, if it's good, it doesn't, well, still you need an appropriate amount of time for but that. But it has to be good. Yes, it has to be good. And the justification is if it's anything less than two or th uh, anything less than four, or maybe three episodes, then why not just make it into a movie and call it quits? Great question. They probably should have for almost every single Disney plus show so far. Like the reason why I'm saying four is around the magic number is because what I'm basically, yeah, is you want you want to expand it just enough to where you feel invested, but not bored. Does that make sense? It does, but it's not the the it, in expansion is not more important than a good show. You, a, mm -hmm. a good show is a tight story that moves the whole time. You don't need to have an hour episode for an expansion. You don't need to have, and then at the end, like one plot development happens. If you look at um. If you look at uh, House of the Dragon and you look at Otto Hightower's daughter, if you, you could give her a whole episode to expand that character, and in the end, you would know more about her, but is that good TV? No. So then fucking cut it out. Like, that's, that's what it means. It's like, yeah, it would be cool if we, could, if we could see. Like, I would like to see Matt Murdock just working on lawyer cases. 
and you could have six to eight episodes of just six to eight different cases that he's working on. But if you're going to make it like this story that every week is like, what's going to happen next week? And it builds on itself. Well, then a lot of the extra stuff of him, like just living as Matt Murdock is probably slowing the story down and needs to be cut out. That's what we saw in Daredevil, right? And on Netflix, Mm. which is all of that shit got cut out except for like the Punisher, his, his court case, almost all of that shit got cut. You almost never see him in court because it, it really, and even then we had too much 13 episodes. Remember like how long they felt and you're Mm -hmm. like, God, they're really stretching this shit. You have to cut out anything that is non-essential. People don't like to hear that. And also like, I think comic fans in general think that more is better. Like in general, they're just like, yeah, more they episodes just want means better. if you tell people like, like when, remember when, uh, love and thunders runtime came out and it was short and it and was short and people sad. were like, they were yeah. like mm, I don't know about this. It's like, do you understand what 30 minutes of filler would be in a movie like that? Where it's God just awful. all jokes. Yeah, but you don't understand. These people have an attachment to it. So for them, the filler is like, I just like seeing them. <coughs> like they're doing things. I don't it's know. It's like dangling keys in front of people in a movie theater. Like they don't care. Do you ever see like a video game where they're like, all right, the story takes about like 10 hours. And you're like 10 hours. But I'm like, okay, so let's make it 20 hours. Is the game going to be better now, or am I going to be like, "Fuck, this is fucking tedious"? Well, it like, depends on how you do it because games are different. If it's a some linear games, game, yeah, yeah, that's, then... that's exactly what I'm saying. Is like certain stories. Can you imagine the Prestige as a show? Oh God, no. Even if you just just did um, like three episodes, because in a movie you could break it into two episodes, right? But even when you broke it into two, where would be a logical point where you stop and it's like, "Oh, this show's amazing." It, it will start to finish. You, to stop it, it in be. the middle, no, you'd be like, Ooh. and then imagine adding a third hour to it to, to get to know the characters more. Like, no. So, so, I, so I suppose Turns the consensus out, is what you're, so what I'm trying to like gauge something. is you're saying Jeez. sometimes expansion and, uh, you know, longer episodes work, but the co- the content has to be good in order Obviously. for you to be invested. What the fuck? How so is like, this like a revelation? So like, so like the difference between that, like let's say you turn Cloud Atlas into a television show, that'd be awful. It's off uh, as a movie look, too. It actually yeah. might be better because you could structure it in a way where you could tell a better story in whatever like realm they were telling a story in. The way that it was as a movie, just like jumping all over the fucking place to tell a cohesive story overall in one sitting, it doesn't work at all. So, okay, so what about the thought process? When we were reviewing Harry Potter, you said that Harry Potter might make a good HBO show for like, mm-hmm. you know, like eight, ep- like seven, eight episodes or something like that. I, I can't commit to how many episodes because. It could, it could honestly be three. Mm-hmm. Like they have to look and make sure that it's moving the whole time. Do we want shots of Harry like studying? Yeah, but like how many? Because we're not going to have him go to hours. school every day. We're not going to watch him at school and every class every day, right? You're not going to watch him in school every day, but you, you, you also want those moments in the book that they completely omitted from the movies that sort of add to the universe and add to the character development, right? And, and you would look at each one of those carefully – and see which ones are worth putting in, which ones actually like are special enough that it adds something and which ones are just like, oh, that was fun. But if you're looking at your, your thing and you're like, half my show is them just having like weird moments at school. I don't know. Like you look at the structure of your plot. Why do you have a 30 minute gap? <laughs> like, are you actually setting anything up? Maybe you should cut some of that out, set it up. Maybe you can sprinkle it in, in other episodes. You know, it doesn't have to be like exactly the way it is in the book. But my point is like, this is a good idea for them to finally bend and say, let's do two seasons instead of 60 episodes. Mm -hmm. And Daredevil, I hope, I mean, how can they do that many episodes? Wasn't it like 18 or something? I thought it was 24 is what they said. It was a double digit number and it was a lot. It's a lot. And is it going to be an hour each? Because you could do a good like crime show, but it's if it's going to be like him battling supervillain, I don't know. Anyway, let's move on. Um, Thor: Love and Thunder video and photos reveal Christian Bale's terrifying transformation. Oh, who gives a fuck? It wasn't even terrifying. I, I just I I brought this one up just because like, look at the lie. Terrifying transformation. Really, we we dunked him in clay for two hours, and that's what happened. He's literally a clown, and like. 
he's a clown in the movie, just making jokes the whole time. He never has a single scary moment. And he doesn't even look scary. Like, he's pale. I don't know. <laughs> I don't care. Um, Constantine, rumored star of scrapped HBO Max series, reacts to news of Keanu Reeves' planned return. Constantine is a character that I'd actually love to see in a show someday because I feel like there's a uh, there's a decent amount of at least for like a season or two I feel like there's a, a decent amount of content that you can pull from there. I never got into it, and you know what I hate is that it always seems to lead to this Justice League dark thing, which doesn't sound interesting to me at all. Yeah, that's when it starts to get a little bit too Avengery, and I, I like him as a solo character. So. Um, so Kiana's they're making a second was that first one any good yeah it was a, it was decent it was a little disconnected from what Constantine is in the comics but it was a good it was pretty good from what I remember I have I've a, seen that first movie a couple times it's all right I have a I have a figure of Keanu Reeves it has one of the best um, supposedly best portrayals of Satan by what's his name I don't know but I mean, you could watch it, Kia, sometime if you wanted. I I probably won't. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't seem like my kind of thing. Um, but I guess this guy played him on on TV, which got canceled. He appeared again in the CW. Mm-hmm. It seems like that's the end of it for him. All right, last thing: Star Wars ten huge missed opportunities and mistakes in the sequel trilogy. We can't forgive Lucasfilm for. All right. Number 10, forgetting Finn's story arc. I agree with that 100%. <laughs> yeah. Uh, exploring what it meant to Finn to have been a stormtrooper was sadly overlooked in the sequels. Yeah. No Anakin Skywalker force goes. I don't care. About I, I, I actually agree with that as well. I feel like that was needed. Where would it have been? So I have, I think I've read you guys my, my complaints for the last Star Wars movie. So the whole thing with Kylo Ren turning back to the light side and renouncing his faith in the Sith. You need Anakin Skywalker there, or at least someone from the light side to sort of talk him out of it. Someone who's not Han Solo, because then you get the contrast of, especially with Anakin, you have someone who's idolizing Darth Vader as his hero as a Sith. And then as he's transferring back to the light side, you now have someone he can idolize the same person he can idolize is now as a light side character who can teach him the benefits of, you know, being good. You see that good contrast as he switches from one side to the other. I feel like that okay. would have been a really good inclusion. Well, so Palpatine is the one that's well, Emperor Palpatine revealed that it had been him. Kylo Ren communicated with when he thought he was speaking to his grandfather. That sort of tells me like they could have written it in that when he see, when he discovers the betrayal, he like becomes disillusioned with, the dark side and realizes that he's being manipulated. I don't know. Also like just as a side note, uh, having Anakin in there at all, like I realized the reason why they don't have him in there is because it breaks the entire story. If you show him in the third movie, then they're going to start asking the question. So why didn't he show up when he was getting manipulated? Why didn't Anakin show up and say, Hey, this it's guy's all evil. nonsense. It's stupid. Yeah. Supreme leader Snoke's identity. I don't, I don't care know. about that. It's just weird that they like set him up, then just got rid of him, then brought in Palpatine. Unfortunately, was... Johnson randomly decided to kill him off in The Last Jedi, an undeniably shocking moment, but one which made it clear he was just a random bad guy. In a throwaway blink and you miss a moment, the Rise of Skywalker indicated that Snoke was just another clone body used by Palpatine to manipulate the galaxy. Honestly, none of it really made sense, and this newly created villain proved to be one of the worst Star Wars antagonists ever. Agreed. What became of the Jedi? I don't care about that. I think in the comics, uh, or like in the books, like Palpatine turned it into his palace that he rules from. Okay. Overlooking the prequel trilogy. Um, I don't know. It it seems at this point, people of Ray Finn and Poe Dameron's age would think that the Jedi are just a myth. Why? That's only two decades ago. Or not decades, but two generations. I would have liked to seen uh, to have seen Coruscant again. I kind of missed that cityscape, especially when the the Jedi uh, Temple. But it's not was, that like, long ago. Around. I know it. It doesn't make sense logically that they would have forgotten about them again. It it also doesn't make sense that even in Luke's age they were like the Jedi were real. Like what the fuck? Yeah. Like, 
That was like 20 years ago, bro. They were literally it, all over the like galaxy. It's like if I tell you, like, if you're like, oh, I don't think Muhammad Ali ever existed. I was like, no, there was a time. And they used, <laughs> there used to be heavyweight champions, and they would fight each other. And, yeah, it's like stupid. And, and just because they stopped doing it doesn't mean that like, it we didn't know exist. Yeah, also, I mean. especially with film and records and governments hunting them yeah. and history and, like, and the holographic records that they have. Yeah, they would definitely. That doesn't make sense. They not to mention the like the oppressive empire that's in your face. Like people would be like, "Where did this come from?" Yeah, and also every five <laughs> minutes they're like, "Are there any Jedi here? Do you have any Jedi?" <laughs> Never reuniting Luke, Han, and Leia. Well, that might have been because some of them started to die. I yeah. mean, they, they had two movies to do it. I guess that's true. But, like, if you, you can't put the three of them together and then they do nothing. Yeah. Because they're they not just, the main characters. They smile yeah. and nod. They're like, it, instead, yeah. they well, kept them apart the and adventure. had them do nothing. Well, I, what I, you know, they were saying, like, um, each movie in the trilogy was supposed to be Kylo Ren confronting one of them. And so mm -hmm. he confronts his dad, he confronts Luke, does not confront. Although that's bullshit because we know that they didn't plan out the trilogy. So yeah. whatever. Yeah. The Skywalker lineage, who cares? I mean, I feel, I feel um, like Kylo Ren deserves better. Yeah, I mean, Kylo Ren is more Skywalker than Rey is, but who gives a what fuck? What was the point of Darth Vader sacrificing himself or Luke becoming a Jedi if they weren't the ones to bring balance to the force. An argument could be made that they had a part to play in a much larger tapestry, but the Skywalkers really weren't that important in the end. Outer space battles. Uh, outer space battles were, were good in the, in the prequels. The sequels, do you even remember them? No. I can't say that I do. There was like one, and it was at the very end, and it was there's too many ships, and everyone was getting struck by lightning. I think Rogue One had the last good Rogue space. Rogue One had some cool shit. Rogue One is a good movie. Yeah. I should watch that again. Uh Luke Skywalker's Dark Side Temptation. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. Um, the fact that he was tempted by the dark side to strike down his nephew in order to do the right thing, which wasn't all that different to Anakin striking down Mace Windu to save Padme, is fascinating. But it wasn't something the movie explored anywhere near enough before Luke's death. Yeah, it's not that yeah. His feeling of failure aside, it's hard to believe Luke would ever turn his back on the resistance. Hamill believes Luke should have turned to the dark side. What? He does? And it's a shame these sequels didn't have the balls to head down that route. Instead, he was just a failure who spent years in hiding, letting his friends and family suffer. By the time we caught up with him in The Rise of Skywalker, he had undergone a total personality transplant, which just ended up making things worse. Hamill believes that Luke should have turned. I've to never the heard him say that. Yeah, I have not heard that. Emperor Palpatine's return. Yeah. Yeah, they should have left him dead. I mean, I like the sound he makes when he shoots the thunder. <laughs> <laughs> uh, his final demise was full of plot holes, and the fact his own lightning is what ended him, meaning he killed himself rather than it being Ray, was just plain silly. We have no issue with Palpatine coming back. But this villain story, we have no, no issue. Villa Lins, this Villa Lins story. But this Villa Lins story would have been better off ending in Return of the Jedi, as Abrams and Chris Terrio simply didn't have what it didn't have what it took to make this any more. This, I think, there's a lot of verb tense problems here. The fact that he fried himself with lightning twice, I think, and that just didn't like, stop. Like, I think we talked about this. Like, stop using the lightning, dude. Every time it gets thrown back at you, like, stop. It's your go-to thing every time. When will you learn? You can I just mean... force choke the guy. See, Vader gets it. Because Vader sees him get destroyed constantly by it, so he force chokes people. <laughs> He's Palpatine, like, yeah. Palpatine is me when we play Elden Ring. Is all I do is rely on my magic, and it gets me killed a shit ton. Yeah. And yeah. it's standing still, charging up as the guy's coming at him with a giant axe. So, The Illusionist. Okay, cool. Edward Norton. Who else is in it? Jessica Biel, Paul Giamatti, some other guy. <laughs> Aaron Taylor Johnson. Interesting. When is it set? Uh, where is... Let's see. In the turn of the century, Vienna. Okay, this could be cool. good. Yeah. All right, let's stop mm. this.
Uh, do you have a game of smart ass ever? No, nah, not this week. Okay. Um, so let's see where we are. We have Watchmen 300, Memento, The Illusionist, No Country for Old Men, Shawshank Redemption. Do we are we still doing the usual suspects? I'd like to. Sure, I have no issue with that. <laughs> the thing would be a Halloween one. Um, there's still the Northman. I'm not sure if I want to do that one. I want to do the wrestler. Uh, John Q. I'm not sure if I want to do that one. Tolkien. Not sure if we want to do that one. Kingdom of Heaven, and Beowulf. Mm. Okay. So we have some cool. good movies coming up still, and so. If you take out the ones that we're not sure about, we have 12 left. Three months. Okay. Yeah. October, November, December. Yeah, should be right on right on time. We'll probably finish with Avatar. Well, we also have Wakanda Forever. Oh yeah. So yeah, Avatar might be the last one. All right. Um, all right, I'll see you guys next time. See you. See you.